Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? The most annoying sound is when you have a high dollar full carbon bike and it is emitting these creaky annoying sounds. Now the source of the sound can be of any of the uh, joints but I know that earlier this year I replaced the bearings here in this joint inside um, I replaced these bearings so the only source of the sound at this point can be the hinges here for the rock shocks rear shock and one way to test it is the following this might come handy next time you're buying a bicycle so when you have the bike on a flat ground just go ahead and lift up the saddle okay just just try to lift it up you don't have to lift up the bike but when you're lifting up the saddle you can feel a little click if there's something wrong with the shocks or one of these hinges or the bearings you're gonna be able to sense a little click and so to pinpoint the position of that click here's what you need to do so use one of your hands to lift up either the frame or the saddle and then put the other hands finger you know your pointing finger put it near the joints so that it's touching both the frame and then the moving part in this case the end of the uh, shock so if you put your finger here and you lift this up and you feel you know a little clicking a discrepancy in motion so that one part is, is, is not only twisting or hinging but it is moving relative to the other part that is going to be the joint so what we are looking at essentially a relative motion between two of the parts so in this case let's say the frame and the top of the shock so I am lifting up the bike you know the saddle with one of my hands and I'm using my other hand to sense it so in this case you know I'm lifting up the saddle and I feel the clicking with the saddle but there is no relative motion in this joint so same here I can touch this bracket and I can touch the swing arm like so you know have my have my fingers on both of them and when I lift it up I can feel that they are moving together now if I do it for this joint here I can feel the clicking right there I can feel that the front end of the bracket is moving relative to the shock so that is going to be the project for the day I'm going to take the shock off and then inspect the joint and possibly replace uh, the bushing and the hardware welcome back to the shrine So here is the shock removed from the frame and if I just go here and I wiggle this joint I can feel that there is relative motion between the bushing and that small end of the shock. So if I just wiggle it this way I can feel that there is relative motion. However on this side on a big side it looks good here's the original shock that came with the bike it's essentially the same as what I have on the bike but the one on the bike has the remote lockout 
So this is the rock lockout mechanism. So what you can do is you can lock it out, you know, or open it. And then uh, this is basically the rebound switch. Okay, you can adjust the rebound. Now on the other one that's on the bike, um, the lockout has a hydraulic hose and you can remotely lock it out uh, from the left side of the handlebar. And as you can see, what we have here is these washers, and then the washers inside, they have an O-ring right there, and that O-ring holds it on this shaft. And this shaft is the one that interfaces with the bicycle frame. So this one goes on like so, and you can see it will stay put. So the way this should work is when this um, when this pin or shaft is installed, you know, I'm pushing with all my might and it barely moves. So you can see how, how hard it is. Look at that. You can see how much force it required to move this shaft in the bushing. That should be the normal. So if you wiggle it and it moves, that's no good. So what I did, I went ahead, bought some parts. First of all, these are the bushings. So as you can see, I got a pair. This is about uh, $10 free shipping, I think, uh, on eBay. Um, and the bushing has a special coating inside. So from a different uh, eBay seller, I bought the long pins and the short pins. This is, uh, you can see OEM rock shocks so that's hopefully from the manufacturer and if you look here I need two different sizes of pins so this end here is 21.8 and then this end is 25.5 so let's say one inch these these are still going in inch size this is not metric everything else is metric on a bike but this is inch so so this uh, great eBay seller sends me the parts from RockShox. You can see it's all OEM and I look at the parts and you can see it says here one half an inch by 8 by 21 8 and this one says the same one half an inch by 8 by 21 8 so one half an inch is the is the size of the bushing that's the internal diameter of the bushing 8 millimeter is the bore in this in this pin that that's the internal diameter and then 21.8 is the length of it now watch this this is the first package I received I didn't even open it I just measured it through the plastic so you can see that's 18.2 so I go back to the eBay seller I'm like hey this is no bueno and uh, he was nice and he sent me a new one so you can see the new one is really 21.2 or you know without the plastic it would be 21.8 so this is the right size if anyone needs this size let me know and I can just send it in the mail so here's one size and here's the other size this should be uh, 25 25.4 it says right there so if, if I measure it, you can see 25.6, you know, plastic has some thickness. I don't have a tool to press this out. I never had one. Um, it's about time to make one because uh, I think that's something that I'll be able to use in the future. So what I'm going to do is uh, make a special tool to do both the press out operation of the bushing and then the press in operation of the bushing found two suitable pieces of aluminum so we're gonna go with these and uh, make some chips I made a drawing actually two drawings so this is gonna be the push out bushing you know to press it out and then this is gonna be the mandrel I guess to push it in and those are the basic sizes if you want to make one for yourself. So let's go make some chips.
here's iteration one. There's the there's the bushing, and uh, this is the uh, pin, press plate, bushing, whatever. I'll let you guys figure out a name for it. If this is used in the automotive industry, it probably has a different name than if it's used in a bicycle industry. That's just how it is. So uh, the bushing press plate goes in like that. It's a little sloppy. I made that uh, diameter 12.5 and this is nominal half an inch so 12.7. You know, could have made it 12.6. It's a little sloppier than, than I like, but it will work. And then here is the, the other bushing and you can see that it will interface like so. So now I can insert the bolt, put that on, put a washer, find a nut, hopefully keep all this assembly in a toolbox, in a bicycle toolbox, in a well-known place. So you can see the problem with this. You know, this is my first iteration. I'm trying something out. So I need to go find wrenches. So if I would have something here that holds on to the bolt, something here that I can twist and tighten, then this would be one assembly. But okay, let's go with the wrenches. So the next problem is that when this bushing, when I put this bushing, you see it can be anywhere. Now if the bushing happens to be pressing against that, that that bushing that I'm trying to press out, like so, then, you know, all this is just going to lock up. So I think I need to go and make a new part instead of that one. And what that part is going to be is going to go here and change the drawing. So this is going to continue like so, okay, like so. So we're going to make a new part that has a certain depth and then it has a pilot diameter here and that pilot diameter is essentially going to be the same as this one so it's going to be 5.8 millimeters okay so what that is going to do when this is inserted it will align it this way it will also replace this plate Okay, so you can see this plate is already bent and uh, it can be, you know, six millimeters longer. So this is a six millimeter bolt, so it can be six millimeters long, that pilot diameter. And hopefully it will align it to begin with. And then this size inside has to be large enough to accommodate that bushing. So magic is about to happen I'm gonna go make a new part and bring you guys back when it's done well, what was it 20 maybe 25 minutes later here's a new part there's the old one there's a new one so as you can see it's got a uh, blind hole for uh, for the bushing bushing fits in nicely and uh, when it's assembled you can see it doesn't wobble that much anymore you know uh, that you cannot really uh, align something by the threads this should be basically a, some kind of ground surface then you can make a nice fit and it wouldn't wobble but it gives you a really good chance to be able to pull that out so there's a nut, let's put a wrench there, a wrench here, and start wrenching. I can feel it's moving, but it's not easy. So let's see if it's, if it's working all right. So this is loose, and looks like this is wedging in. Okay, so this diameter is large. So it started going in, but this diameter is too large. So 
so you can see this part this guy is wedging in and uh, the size right now is 15.2 and uh, I sized it according to the OD of the bushing you can see it's 15.2 so it should be less than that because otherwise it will wedge in okay so I'm gonna go and do some adjustment and try it again it's a process anything you work on is a process you can get something from your friend and make a copy for yourself so uh, 50, 1495 let's give it another chance so what I'm gonna do is put a washer because I don't want to mar this surface here so short wrench long wrench and it's working I can feel that the torque on the wrench is getting less and less that means that means that uh, the bushing is, is pressing out as you can see now you know this this was a great idea you can see that uh, I'm holding it with that wrench but that wrench doesn't go in anymore so I need to go and get a different one one of the best wrenches I ever bought so let's see if it it will do the job there you have it one bushing is pressed out and uh, as you can see the parts fit together nicely so that's always a good thing and I'd say it went relatively easy now you can see on this bushing that there is some wear inside so let's go and uh, get the uh, real one on a bike replaced so now I know that pressing out the bushing will work with this tool you can see one of the drawbacks having the uh, remote lockout is that I cannot remove physically the shock from the bike unless I disconnect the, the fluid hose here and uh, then if I assemble it I have to go and and uh, bleed it so this is this is the lower section and there is definitely a play I can feel the play um, and then when I remove that bushing you can see the wear pattern on the bushing these parts are made out of soft aluminum and they just put some kind of coating on it I believe it's uh, some kind of Teflon coating or similar in nature and you can see the wear pattern here on both sides so that's where the grinding and annoying sound is coming from the top one is actually real hard to move you can see the spacers come off easily but the pin is just is, in, is, is there good <laughs> I don't think this pin is pivoting I don't think it's pivoting I think that might be one of the issues uh, with the with the screw I think the screw itself in the frame is pivoting this bushing is there good I'm just gonna use the new tool to press out the uh, the bushing see how hard it will be there is the setup I'm just gonna use 
the new tool to press out this this pivot pin. I think that pin might be seized in there. Because I can feel the pin is not really moving in the bushing. Oh yeah. I can feel on the pressure that it's in there good. I don't know if it's seized. I don't see any wear on it. I gotta tell you this pin was in there good. I don't see any wear on it but I'm just gonna go and press out the bushing and install a new bushing. The bushing seems to be intact. I don't see any wear pattern. Let's look at this one on the narrow end and uh, that bushing has seen better days so I'm gonna press that one out too. It's not the easiest task to take these apart with the camera being in front of me. The guys in the bike shop probably laughing at me now. You know, they probably charge two hours of work for this. But there you have it. First bushing is out. The bushing looks intact. I'll probably save that for needy times. Here comes the lower one. You really need, you really need three hands for this job if this shock is still attached to the bike you would need a helper and just like that the second bushing is out I'd say the tool works perfectly but it's just awkward to hold all these parts together This bushing, this bushing looks okay. So these are the new bushings. Let's go and install them. I didn't have reservations about this going back together easy. Okay, here's the seam on the bushing. The bushing is just a piece of some kind of metal that's rolled up into this crescent shape or full cylinder shape part and so it's got a seam and so if you look how the shock works the shock works in compression so what we want to do is we want to put the seam in an area that will not see much compression okay so this will rest against the pin on this side so we want the seam to be on the opposite side just like that okay so we want the seam to point this way at least that's what I'm going to do working quite nicely I gotta make sure I stop before the bushing starts to pull out on the far side. So I'm just checking it visually here on this side and uh, I can go and uh, pull that in and do an inspection. So you can see the bushing is seated properly on both sides. Maybe Maybe I need another half a turn. But you don't want the bushing to be sticking out on one side. So here's the bushing seated. You can see it's flush. It's flush on both sides with the clavis end. 
Uh oh. So on this one, the compression is coming, you know, from from the pin, and it's pushing that way. So we want the seam, this seam. We want the seam pointing out towards us. So something like that. Going in relatively easy. Again, I oriented the seam right here to face us, to be away from, from the high pressure side. So there you have it, another bushing, nicely installed. The edge of the bushing is flush with the uh, side of the clevis, so that hopefully should work out fine. I'm gonna go and install the new pins. You can see the short one is from the small end. I, I looked through the Rock Shocks uh, manual and it doesn't specify any kind of grease or other lubricant to be used. I think this coating is self-lubricating. So here's the top one. Just need to make sure that it is going in straight. I gotta tell you, this is a little um, tighter than what I like. Uh, I've heard that they sell uh, sizing tools for these bushings. Yeah, that's, that's definitely tight. I'm just wondering if this clavis is going to pivot around the pin once I assemble it. This is where the new tool comes handy again, pressing in that pin. Look at that, it's going in easy. I just need to make sure it's got the same protrusion on both sides. So you can see that this side has more protrusion than on that side. So let's do one more turn, which is one millimeter. This is an M6 by one, and you can see now it's even. Same thing on the lower side. Just gotta make sure that both sides are even. There you go. Those are brand new bushings and pins installed in a Rock Shocks. This is a Monarch XX model. Again, this has the remote lockout. The last thing is to uh, tighten the shock mounting bolts. Here's the Cannondale manual. It specifies 8 Newton meters or 70 inch pounds. I got the torque wrench preset. So we're gonna go and tighten these bolts up. There you go. That's eight newton meters. It's not much. That's one of the things when you're wrenching on a bike, you wanna know what the tightening torque is for the fasteners, not to over tighten them. There you go, eight newton meters. So everything is set, the bike is ready to go. Unfortunately, the weather is not in my favor. So testing the bike will have to wait. Until then, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next one. Bye. No more creaking. <laughs>